good morning everyone it's good to see all of you here thank you so much for coming uh, i'm sure we will have a good time today uh, just listening and hearing the word of god no i believe and i know that god has prepared something special for us this morning amen are you ready <laughs> okay let's pray Lord, thank you so much. I just love your word because it gives understanding to the simple. And Lord, that's who we are here. We are simple people. But Lord, uh, we know and we love your word. And so I pray, Father, that uh, even as we, uh, Lord, just dive into the Gospel of John this morning, pray that you will come and Lord, be with us. Uh, and guide us through this study. Pray, Lord, that your word will be sharp. It will be uh, faithful to the text. And I pray, Father, that you will enable me, oh God, to communicate clearly. And uh, Father, just open our hearts with understanding and give us eyes to see and ears to hear your word. So that, Lord, the word that is lodged, that will be uh, shared to us, as we hear it, oh God, will not be taken away, Lord, because we do not understand by the enemy. And I pray, Father, that it will, our hearts will be a soil uh, that is rich, oh God, that is prepared for your word this morning. So thank you, uh, and we entrust this uh, sharing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, once again, I'm going back to the series that I started, you know what, a year ago. No, a year ago, I actually started this series uh, last December 19, 2021. No, among anniversary, wedding anniversary, namon Edgar. So uh, this is our, <laughs> and I'm now on part eight, amen. <laughs> Salamat yung kay sa ginoo because, you know, when I started this journey, this is actually a study of faith for me. Uh, because when I started this journey, dili manggog ko, no? dili ko gawali o book series. No? In fact, na-inspire lang ko ato to do a series, a series on the book of John because I kept hearing mga series nga ginahimo ni Attorney William and then ni uh, Pastor Edgar. Niya in my heart of hearts, nag-desire ko nga, Lord, ako punta, makahimo punta akong series na I'm usually a devotional speaker. Uh, pero katong nga time, nag-desire ko niya gigrant sa, sa ginoo. Now, uh, as I said, it's a journey. It was a journey of faith when I started the book of John. pag yun nga kong napili <laughs> of all books. No, it is the most profound. It is a very profound book. No, If you just really go into it and take time to study uh, John, it's such a wonderful book. Uh, book and I hope na you really enjoyed this journey with me no uh, na bless ba ang uba tanan <laughs> sa book of John <laughs> I hope you have been as blessed as I no because uh, sa tinuod lang no tunga tunga aning tuig no uh, nagingon ko ila ga din na lang siguro na ko humanon ang <laughs> John kay murag di kaya <laughs> no and then but the Lord just really uh, gave me uh, encouragement chapter by chapter no ang journey with the book of john so this morning as i've said we're now in part 8 and uh, i said to you before that uh, we will be covering chapter 6 now chapter 6 verses 1 to 71 now again because this is such a long uh, chapter I will not be reading some of the text. I will be reading some, but I will not be reading some, but you will be able to see uh, the verses as we go along, okay? Now, the breakdown of chapter 6 goes like this. Verse 1 to 21 is the signs, and then verses 22 to 59, the sermon, and verses 60 to 71 is the sifting, okay? Now, previously, I actually showed you four, no? I said that we will be covering the signs, the, the storm, 
uh, the um, sermon and the sifting. Pero I thought when I was going through it again yesterday, uh, in these past few days, uh, I realized na pwede rin ako incorporate ang uh, sinog, ang storm into one. So that's why it's now the signs, the sermon, and the sifting. Now next, I will be covering chapters, the introduction or the background to chapters 7, 8, and 9. And the background of that is the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? And that's a very interesting uh, chapter. No, because I mentioned before, I don't know if you remember, I mentioned before in part 6 that Jesus will be demonstrating in no uncertain terms that he is the one who fulfills the hopes and the joys of the feasts and the festivals. And he does it here, no, in the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? And then after that, if I still have time, I will be covering the details of John chapter 7. Okay, and that's verses 1 to 53. Okay, wow, I'm so, 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 so excited. Okay, now I will just be giving you some background, no? Here, just a little bit of background to what we will be dealing with today. And we will read that. That's the verses from John uh, chapter, uh, uh, verses 1 to 4. Now, 12 months have passed. Uh, since the Passover in chapter 5. You remember that the context of chapter uh, 5 was the Passover feast. No, So that story in chapter 5, we're now back in chapter 6. It's been a year. Isa na katuig ang nilabay before chapter 6 happened. Okay? And Jesus' rejection, as we all know from that story, Jesus was rejected by the religious authorities in chapter 5. So it's been a year since then, but John doesn't anymore talk about this period because the synoptics or the other Gospels actually cover it. Now, I said to you uh, in part 1, now when we started, that because John's Gospel was written, the, the, the last one, the last Gospel to be written, he actually leaves out a lot of details that the other synoptics already cover, and he does that here as well. So uh, this is more likely, and so uh, we are told again that this is another Passover. No, a Passover is again coming. So by this time, this is actually now the third Passover uh, that in Jesus' public ministry. And it is really because of the Gospel of John that the scholars were able to determine that the, uh, that the length of Jesus' public ministry was actually three to three and a half years because of the Passover feasts that he went to. Okay, the first one was in chapter 2, you know, where, where he healed, uh, where he actually turned the water into wine. The other one, as I said, was in chapter 5, and now in chapter 6. This, an, another Passover is coming okay now this time Jesus did not go to Jerusalem okay for the Passover he went there in chapter 5 but in chapter 6 he stays in Galilee and this is be, uh, perhaps because he doesn't want to aggravate further you know, the conflict that started in chapter 5 so he stays here now in Galilee and uh, which is indicated in verse 1 uh, that we saw previously in the previous slide. But nonetheless, this is Passover season, okay? And, ex and its expectations and anticipations influence and color much of chapter 6, okay? Now, the Jewish people during Passover usually have readings, no, nasa ilang mga pangbasahon during, sa season, during this season. Murag pareha sa ato, during Christmas. No? So at Christmas, we usually read Luke 2, where the angels or, uh, visited or the shepherds came. No? Or we go to Isaiah, uh, or we go to Micah. No? So nasa ilang mga readings. It's the same with the, Pas uh, it's the, same with the Passover. No? They would usually read Exodus 12, which is the account of the Passover, and then Exodus, Exodus chapter 16, 
which is the manna provision. Now, usually, mona ilang mga readings. Now, the point of the readings and the point of the feast, no, this Passover feast, is to remember the past. No, kapila na na to na mention dere, and to renew their hope that another deliverer after the order of Moses would come to them at their present or at least in their near future. Okay? So, with the Passover comes the expectation of another deliverer no, after the likes of Moses. Ilan ang gi, 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 uh, prophesy na, na ni Moses in Exodus, no? Nga, uh, a time will be coming that the prophet will actually come and that's what they usually are waiting for or praying for whenever Passover comes, okay? Now, so in chapter 6, there will be, uh, we will be hearing about Moses, we will be talking about the manna, and there's the expectation of the prophet, as I've said, and then Jesus feeds the 5,000, Jesus walks in water to save the disciples, all of these accounts that John wrote actually has allusions to Exodus, okay? So if you have not read Exodus 12 or you have not yet read Exodus 16, no, assignment na ninyo. When you go home, basahan ninyo na siya so that you can really appreciate and understand what we are talking about today, no? You do not miss out on the details of this story, okay? So, let's go to the signs. And this will be from chapter 6, uh, verses 1 to 21, as I've said. Now, just a little review. John was quite selective. No? He was quite selective in the miracles that he wrote in his gospel. He only wrote about seven or eight, if you actually uh, count the miracle that happened in the epilogue. No? But normally, it's seven. While Matthew had 20, Mark had 18, and then Luke had 20. So this John, seven ra ang iyang giswat sa iyang gospel. But he refers, he refers to these miracles as signs. No? Dili miracles iyang tawag, signs ang iyang tawag. Ane. In the Greek, that is Simeon. No? Simeon, ako nang gizi. Sulti sa inyo ha, atong uh, part one. And it it means that the significance of that particular miracle is not just the miracle itself, but to what they point towards. Okay? So as we read the two miracles that John will cover in this chapter, remember not just the miracle, but what do these miracles point to? Because that is what John wants to uh, uh, emphasize to us. In fact, that is his purpose statement, no? Yang ingon dito sa John 21, I have read, all, I have written all these signs so that you may believe and that by believing you will have eternal life. No? Yun ana ang point ni John. No? So that you, you may know Christ and that by believing in Him you will have Zoe eternal life. No? So, ang miracles ni, ni, ni Ngagay Pang Sulat ni John was purposely selected so that our faith actually grows, our understanding of who Jesus is grows. No? Now, that's the point of all this. No? That's, that's the point of why I actually delve, uh, uh, went into John. Because ang, iyang, ang, ang purpose of it is really for us to know Christ more and to love Him more. And so that by believing what we put our faith in Christ, we actually um, just have life more and more. You know, when you, when you actually read John or when you are confronted by what John is, writes in his gospel, there is no middle ground. There's either 
the theme of acceptance, rejection, faith, and belief runs through throughout John's gospel. There is no middle ground. Either you believe or you do not. No? Either you have faith or you have unbelief. Well, I middle ground sa gospel ni John. At the end of this study, you will either put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ or you do not. No, ingunana ang gospel of John. Now, of the seven miracles that he recorded in his gospel, five of those are unique uh, to John only. No, dili ni mo makita sa uban nga mga gospels. But the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle that is found in all four gospels. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then Jesus walking on water is recorded in the three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John. Now, this alone, these facts alone should alert us not to the significance of these two miracles. No, because John did not omit this. Even if he knew it was in all the other gospels, he actually placed it again in his gospel. Now, his gospel was written, written in AD 90, no? Mona siya ang pinakalas na gospel that was written. So, kabalo na siya kung say content sa uban. Kaya ang uban nga mga gospels was written in around in the early part of AD 30 or something. But, kabalo na si John. But he still included these two miracles. Okay? So, we have already covered three out of the seven. Do you still remember what those were? Saman? Kisay nakadumdum. Oh, na day according to what? The turning of water into wine, the healing of the nobleman's son, and the healing of the layman in Bethesda. Okay? So, again, as I've said, today we'll be looking at these two miracles, which is Simeon number four and Simeon number five in chapter six. Okay. Let's look at our text. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for already he had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many. Okay, now we are told from the previous, uh, from the beginning uh, verses that a large but unbidden crowd has gathered. No, wala ni sila gihi. Wala ni ni nagwali si Jesus during this time niya nagtapok sila, no? Or wala nang imbitar si Jesus during this time para magwali. No, niabot lang to sila dito actually. Ang, ang nagtapok, ang gitawag ni Jesus during the time, ang iyan mga disciples. But the crowd was there, no? prompted no doubt by their curiosity and hope for a miracle. Now, it is presumed that some of these crowds were pilgrims. No? Kaya padulong man sila dito sa Jerusalem uh, for the uh, Passover. On their way to the all, annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Now, it was estimated, if you look at Matthew's account of this miracle, that about 10,000 people were there. 5,000 men with um, uh, women and children. More or less, um, estimates sa mga scholars, there's about 10,000 people. Okay? Now, as the day declined, Jesus recognized that they were hungry. Siyempre. <laughs> no? So, he turns to his disciple asking for their opinion on how to solve this issue. Now, John's narrative is quite interesting because he alone mentions disciples by name. No, ang uban, di, ang uban mga gospels, the other synoptics, actually just says the disciples. No, They are one unit. But uh, in John, they are individually isolated. Okay? So in keeping with John's focus on individuals, he actually names at least four, okay? Now, you've read about Philip. Philip is one of those that has been named. It was actually Philip that Jesus turns to and asks, where shall we buy bread for this people to eat? Now, 
that's quite reasonable because Philip was a native in the area. No, in this particular area, he was a native there. He lived there. And so Jesus expected him to have some knowledge about these things. Ahamo palit, mura pareha sa ato ba? Mga butuan nun, kabalumata kung aha to mga to. When we are looking for something, no? Aha nga tindahan. But Philip's response was to calculate, no? How much food would be required to feed such an incredible number of people. And at the end of his calculations, he was quite sure of what cannot be done. Okay? No? But then, another disciple was named, and his name was Andrew. He was more hopeful. He was more hopeful. He brought the boy who had five loaves and one fish, hoping that something might be done. Okay? See, Philip, nothing could be done. See, uh, Andrew, something would pro could probably be done. But however, he himself doubted the value of his suggestion. Okay? Saying, how far will they go among so many? He was still overwhelmed no, with the number of people that were there. Now, towards the end of this chapter, Peter will be mentioned. Okay, Although confused, Peter actually makes that great statement, you have the words of life. Okay? Now, Judas is also mentioned. Interesting, Kayo, who being in the midst of of all this glory, miracles, splendor, all the things that Jesus did, all the things that Jesus spoke, is he was in the midst of all those, he still chose damnation at the end. No sad, tragic story. Again, again, as I've said in the past, being surrounded by the miracles or the miraculous or the supernatural do not actually engender faith. Amen? So kita, as people of God, you know we love miracles. We love miracles, but love the Word of God more. Amen? Love the Word of God more because it is the Word of God that brings faith. Amen? That is how you grow. That is how you grow in Jesus, okay? Now, that is really a staggering thought if you think about it, no? Nga kita, no? Who knows? Some of us may be here Sunday after Sunday, but in the end, we can still choose damnation. Amen? So, this is written as a warning for us, no? Do not choose life. Muna ay sige, ibalik-balik na rin ni John. Choose life, choose Zoe, no? not bio. Zoe, choose eternal life. God has given you the capacity to choose. God has given you the ab ability to choose. Choose God, amen? You will have so many choices in this life. The best choice that you can possibly make is to choose Jesus. Amen? So, back to our <laughs> text. You know, uh, in John 6, 10, Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Because there was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down. And as I've said, there are about 5,000 men, not including the women and children. And so, Jesus' actions here, actually when he asked uh, the people to sit down so that food can be distributed, Revealed both natural wisdom and supernatural power. Yang gi combine ang doha, no? And that's really a good, good combination, no? God works through and in you, no? When God works through you, He doesn't take away the power of your choice. Amen? No? Sa'y makadungog kog maka... Istorya ba? Nga maingon nga... Tugay kay kung nakapili sa kong sinina. Kung siya kong suuton ka ron, kay... Kay nagwat pa ko nga i-reveal sa Holy Spirit o unsay color sa kong sinina. No weird kit siya kayo. <laughs> because God doesn't take away <laughs> the power of your choice. You have to make choices when you're with God. Amen? No? So, uh, Jesus uh, 
exemplifies for us that for us here, well, he uses natural wisdom and supernatural power. His orders to have people sit down was necessary to stabilize the crowd, okay? He actually, in Mark, you will read that he actually asked the, uh, the, uh, the 10,000 people to be in groups of 150, no? So, that's his strategy, no? So that there is, there will be no rush for food. Usahay ka na rin mag-Christmas party ta, dere, wala yung strategy, no? Ala, das mag lang ta. <laughs> Pero sa atong Christmas party, linya ta, ha? <laughs> Para <laughs> ma-stabilize na to ang crowd. It is also, it also served them, it also served to organize them in groups to facilitate the serving. Now, like many of his miracles, this particular miracle, uh, the multiplication of food uh, happened without much fanfare. Naingunan naman si Jesus, he actually doesn't draw a lot of attention to himself. Panagsarag yun kayo na niya himoon. But many of his miracles, no, he lum lang. He does not even say it, he does not even pray, no, he just does it. No, he just acts it, he just wills it. Naingunan na si Jesus, okay? So, as the disciples distributed it, no, ang food, Jesus seems to have increased it by breaking it indefinitely. No, until all were satisfied. Giyong sa kato, no, kasi ko gunahunag giyong sa kato. Makabalo silang ang sulod sa ilang basket isara. Pero pag break ad to, no, huwag may katapusan. No? <laughs> so incredible was this miracle that in verse 14, the crowd no, said, surely, surely this is the prophet who is to come into this world. Amen? Incredible ni siya miracle if you think about it. No, grabe siya. How can you multiply food like that? No, nga murag wala lang. No? So, Jesus actually at this point becomes so popular uh, that in verse 15, they said, it says there, they intended the crowd, intended to come and make him king by force. No? Grabe na nila. Grabe na nila. <laughs> Kinibitong kaon, daghan, yun kayo, malin lang, anak, no? <laughs> Muna siguro akong gingon na to. <laughs> Sige na, makakatawa ko kayo sa ay. <laughs> si Edgar, may, uh, as you know, ang bimang, <laughs> bimang Christmas party, Ogma <coughs> dere. Ya si Edgar, kada makadawat na siya sa iyang text, may nguna siya halan, idaghan na mi, nebot na mi kuan, una, 50, oh, 30 plus pa to, no? And then, nebotog 50, nebotog 70, niya gahapon, ni nguna siya, lo, nebot na mi 80. Niya na siya, <laughs> hindi siya, tinuot kina ito mong gisulti, nga ba sa Christmas party mo, daghan. <laughs> Normal nila nga gathering 30 to, four, uh, 30 to 40 na man siya. Yeah, naka, ang uban daw ko no pastor nakaingon nga hello daghan day ng mga pastor dere no <laughs> ingon ana sad ta ang pinaka biggest attendance nato actually dere is christmas party <laughs> nakakatawa mi nakakita sa listahan kay oy hapit naman ang 150 <laughs> pero you know basta kaon dagay malin lang no <laughs> If you can serve a bread to a large group of people like that, you can have their allegiance. Amen. <laughs> but Jesus knows that their response to this miracle will also be shallow. No? Will also be shallow just like in his previous miracles. The crowd that were there were after what Jesus can give. They were not after who Jesus was or who Jesus is. And sometimes we approach God like that. We are after his blessings. We are after what he can give us, peace, no joy. He's all that, and he loves to give. But there is more to Jesus than what he gives, amen? And that's the point of this miracle. They're supposed to point us towards who the miracle worker is. Amen? So Jesus, refusing to be their bread king, 
now retreated into the mountains by himself. And that's where we end up, no, this particular miracle. But this was also a sad occasion for Jesus, uh, as news of John the Baptist's beheading early on has reached him. No? It was also during this time of the miracle that John was killed by Herod. Okay? No, ang ayang anak, no, ang anak niya, dance before, gisugo sa ayang mama ba? Tapos, uh, John was already imprisoned, no? But Herod actually didn't want to kill him. But ang iyang mama, no? Ang, the queen actually uh, wanted to kill John. And then, uh, the story goes that his daughter actually danced so well that uh, Herod said, ask for anything you want. And then, he sa and sh then she said, I would like to ask for John the Baptist's head. No moto. So that was why John was killed. No? So it was a sad occasion. Jesus, uh, John is actually his first cousin. And so he needed to be alone to process this loss, which he wasn't able to do because he had to minister and serve the needs of the crowd. Amen? So, say, no? Love your pastors. <laughs> Love your ministers because you don't know what's happening no, in the background. No, sometimes we do minister. Bisan pag grabe, na kayo nga kahit tabo sa mong mga kinabuhay. I remember the time when my mother was dying. We didn't even know that she was dying. But on the Wednesday, I actually visited her. No, she died on a Friday. I visited her, her in, Friday, uh, in Wednesday, Wednesday night. And she said to me, Les, mamatay na mong yug ko. Because unlike my father, ligon mangod siya. Akong papa, we actually saw him degenerate. Pero my mother was still okay pa. No, and then dili maoy. Kami ni Mabel naging on me. Dili maoy, grabe. Siya niya siya. Di, mamatay na yung kules niya na siya. Ayaw uli. Ayaw uli. Bantay ko. Bantay ko. Niya na siya sa ako during that Wednesday night. During the time I was working on something, I was working on a uh, training uh, that would be initiated for the first time with a with uh, the China team, with our China team, on the Friday evening, and I had to finish it because I was working on it. It was given to me late, so dugay kayo na siya na na himo, no si si himo. And so I was really wanting to be with my mom. So ako gid siyang gi kuna na ako gid siyang gi trabaho no Wednesday uh, from Monday gi kadlawonan yun na ako siya mahuman ko alas 5 na sa kadlawon because I really wanted to finish that particular uh, work so that I can be with my mom. No, I finish it Friday AM 6 AM and then my, the call of my sister Leah came and said, let's, let's go to the hospital because si mama gitabang na. And that was really one of the biggest heartbreak in my heart. No, oh, grabe gito siya. And I just, I just said, Lord, grabe, no. No, I was still working and my mom was actually asking. And it was a, it was a, it was a burden that I carried through, throughout that time, no. So be kind. <laughs> be kind to your ministers. Be kind to your pastors. Because sometimes they will choose ministry over family. Many, many times. No, mona yamong, mona yamong koan, mona yamong ginahimo many times. No, many of your pastors here are very sacrificial. No, if you know the pastors here, they're very sacrificial. Okay? So, anyway. Go back. <laughs> Sigla <ko> digress. <laughs> Simeon number five. Jesus walking on water. Now you will find that this has, as I've said, parallel passages in the book of Matthew and in the book of Mark. Okay? You will find that in Matthew 14 and in Matthew and in Mark 6, if you want to read it later. Okay? Now, within this miracle, the, within this one miracle, there seems to be four subparts, no? This one sign 
This one sign, there are four miracles that happen. Grabe. Grabe good, no? Una, Jesus walking in water, which is mentioned in all three Gospels, John, Matthew, and Mark, okay? And then Peter walking in water. No, it is mentioned in Matthew, but not in John and Mark, okay? And then we have the storm ceases immediately as Jesus climbs into the boat. And this is mentioned in Matthew and Mark, but not in John, okay? Para makabalota, we get the full picture, and immediately in the last miracle that happened that there is when Jesus climbed into the boat, immediately they were transported to their destination. Okay? And this is mentioned in John, but not in the other two. Okay? So, read all John 6, Matthew 14, and Mark 6. Okay? Because this is where uh, the miracle, the, uh, the Jesus walking on water miracle is written. Okay? Or was written. So, the count there, let's go to the next. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. It says there in our text, a strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed uh, three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Now, evening in Galilee could be any time in the afternoon, okay, before sunset. So, adlaw pa ni siya. No? Twilight is brief in Palestine, so the disciples naturally wanted to be home before dark. Okay, so just a bit of background there. The sea or the lake of Galilee is about 600 feet below sea level. And there, it is shaped like a cup among the hills. Makita ninyo, yunana siya, no? Due to its low-lying position and in the rift valley surrounded by hills, it is prone to sudden violent storms. And since the disciples were rowing towards Capernaum, they were heading into the wind. Consequently, they made very little progress. That's why... Uh, although the lake is about 12 to 13 kilometers across, uh, John mentions that the disciples were only about three and three and a half miles okay, across when they encountered a violent storm. Now, you have to remember these men are seasoned fishermen. Okay? They have spent their life on this lake, and, this was, and for them to be afraid, this was really such a violent storm. No? They were frightened that they were going to drown. And then in the midst of all this storm, they saw Jesus walking. And they were frightened. Understandably so, okay? Ikaw sa siguro kung naka dito. No, grabe na ni mo kalisang sa storm. And then nabay naglakaw on water. But Jesus comes to them and say, It is I. Don't be afraid. Now that phrase there, it is I, don't be afraid, is ego imi. No? In Greek, ego imi, I am. Now we have actually encountered this phrase before in chapter 4 when the Samaritan woman actually said, the Messiah, I know that the Messiah is coming. And Jesus says to her, I am he, ego imi. Okay? Ego imi. It is the literal translation of the Hebrew anihanu. No, I am. I am. Now we will see these phrases, ego imi, anihanu, over and over and over again in this, in this gospel. And we will see, I will tell you the significance of it in the next chapters. So Jesus gets on the boat and immediately, as I've said, they wear, trans, they wear at their destination. The Mofat Bible actually says instantly they were at their destination. Now, all these miracles combined, Peter, uh, Jesus walking on water, Peter walking on water, the storm ceases, and then they were immediately at their destination. All of it are so breathtaking. Amen. If you were there, you would just be overwhelmed by what Jesus says. That the disciples' response to this which is written in Matthew 14, 32. They said, 
truly you are the son of God. Amen? And they get it. It's not the miracles. It's who Jesus is. Amen? The miracles points to Jesus. Truly, you are the son of God. Now, worship is really the only proper response to these miracles. There's nothing else. Amen? So if Jesus works a wonderful miracle in your life, be grateful. No, praise him, worship him. No, because that's, that's who your miracle worker is. No, I have heard so many miracles this year. Miracles of healing, miracles of saving. No, truly, no, katong word na gihatag sa ato that this will be a miracle year has come to pass. Okay? So now let's go to the third one, the sermon. And this is the longest in this chapter. Okay? So they get across. I'm not going to re read the text there. I'm just going to display it so that you can carefully uh, look at it. They get across. No? As I said, they were immediately transported to where they should be. And the next day, the crowds actually find Jesus on the other side as they go looking for him. So they knew he hadn't gone with the disciples the night before, but getting into Capernaum, there he is. No, and they ask him, how did you get here? <laughs> so they said, how did you get here? When did you get here? No, they actually have, this crowd will have a series of questions for Jesus as he does his discourse, okay? Now he said, now, Jesus doesn't actually answer their question on how he got there and when he got there. Um, and so, uh, but he answered them. No? And I'm going to paraphrase what he said. And he said, you sought me out because you really had a good dinner last night. And now you want breakfast. No? <laughs> he knew what they were there for. Okay? He knew they were not there for him. They were after what he could do. And so that began, actually, his long discourse. As I've said, the Gospel of John, actually, he, Jesus doesn't talk much about parables, but he goes into long discourses, okay? So this starts with John 6, 6 27, the beginning of his discourse. He says, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of a approval okay so we will see here that jesus was not flattered by the attention of the crowds no which is unique to him no most leaders i know would be flattered when there is a crowd so i know magolta kung gamay ray tao nga musimba kay yung sao na lang atong mga wali nga atong gipang preparahan og dugay kay sa ngatanan <laughs> but <laughs> jesus okay lang okay John 6, 6, 27 is actually an echo of Isaiah 55, 2, which says, Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Okay? So instead, Jesus exhorts them to focus their energies on going after food that gives eternal life, which only he can give, because the Father gave him the right to do so. Now, I would like you to focus uh, or to take particular interest in this discourse, no? As you go home. Because this, this discourse is actually the beginning of the watershed of Jesus' public ministry. Remember, he was at the height of his popularity when he fed the 5,000. After this discourse, from fever pitch popularity to utter rejection by the crowds. Okay? So what did he say? Nga man, sa may nahitabo. Nga man. Nga grabe man niya, kapapular. In fact, the crowd were wanting to make him king by force. But after this particular discourse, nahanaw ang tanan. Okay? And we will find that out here. So, they respond to what he said in verse 28 saying, So what are we to do then? No? So may amoy mo so that we may be, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, what will we do so that we may habitually be doing the works of God? Now, famously, Jesus answered them in verse 29 
and still in the amplified version, this is the work of God that you believe, adhere to, trust in, rely on, and have faith in the one whom he has sent. And so again, Jesus makes a very audacious claim. No? Ato, so usahin when we read this, murugwa lang sa ato. But if you were the Jew, during, if you were a Jew during this time, ha, ah, makakuan siguro ka. Sa may siya, ni claim man siya, nga ginuo siya. No? The only way, in effect, what Jesus was saying, there is only one work that you can do to please God. You need to believe in me because the Father has sent me. No? Muna yung gisulti dito. No? And when you make that kind of claim, wow. Ang response actually, no, I, I, I was saying that Jesus said so many things in John. No? That uh, no other religious leader has ever, ever claimed. No, not even close. Okay? No, in fact, as I've said already over and over again, Jesus is probably the only person who was killed for what he said, not by what he did. Okay? And this was one of those. No? As they, <coughs> the response of the crowd to this claim was incredulous. <laughs> again, no, in, they said there, so, what miraculous sign will you do if we are to believe that you are the prophet? No? In fact, Jesus said, not just a prophet. He is the one that God sent. What, what is your proof again? Kuyaw sa nga crowd, no? Murag, wa ba sila ni Agay sa feeding of the 5,000 or the 10,000 the day before? Nangayo na po otro of miraculous proof. What miraculous sign will you give so that we can believe you? Now, and then, they did not stop there. They then began to compare Jesus with Moses. He said, no, our four, they said, our forefathers ate manna in heaven, uh, in the desert. As it is written, he gave them, he gave them bread from he heaven to eat. Okay? More sad silag. But in the next verses, Jesus responded to this challenge by informing the crowd that as wonderful as the manna was, it was not the true bread. No? He uses the word there, alethinos, which means it is not original. It, it, was, it was not the genuine bread. Because he says, I am the true bread. Okay? It was only what uh, Moses did in the wilderness was only a foreshadowing of the true bread that would come. And so we have to note, he says there, I am the true bread. This is the first time that Jesus uses the I am, the ego imi phrase with a predicate. And he will use it again, it again six more times. He will say in chapter 8, 12, I am the light of the world. I am the door. In chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. Jesus is actually very keen on the number seven, as I've already said. Okay? Seven claims, seven witnesses, and now seven I am with predicates. Okay? Now, in the next verses, verses 33 to 50, Jesus further amplifies on what this true bread claim meant. And I've simplified it here for you. I've summarized it for you. So, the main thought is that it wasn't Moses who gave them the manna, but God his Father. Moses did not give them the real bread from heaven. And then, unlike the manna, which was just for Israel, this true bread is for the whole world so that's why karon were uh, we are blessed with that and the israelites ate manna and still died but whoever ate this true bread will live for eternity now the israelites also ate manna every day and yet remained hungry but jesus said those who eat this true bread will never go hungry now he repeated again that he was the true bread from heaven and he was the only bread that satisfied 
Okay, the attainment of this satisfaction hinges on belief and faith in Jesus alone. Amen? So the Jews respond to these statements, show their utter lack of understanding and their materialistic frame of mind from crass literalism. They said, Sir, from now on, give us this bread. No more about kaunun siya. It actually parallels the Samaritan woman's request for the water of life. No, if you remember chapter 4. To disbelief. No, yun na nila response. Ngayon sila, is this not Jesus? No, we know him. We know his father and mother. We know Mary. We know Joseph. How can he say that he's from heaven? No, so yun na nila response to what Jesus was saying. And so, Jesus actually, after this, Jesus does not back down. No, ang mga disciples maka maka imagine lang ko sa mga disciples nga mayon siro yun dang na ayaw na kaya na agitate na ang crowd, de ba? O sa yata wala himo pero no Jesus does not back down. He actually adds fire to the fuel, <laughs> and he says he literally nailed the coffin of his public ministry because he said, "This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world." Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Okay, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, okay, remains in me, and I in him. <laughs> Hearing this, the crowds were disgusted. They think he was talking about cannibalism. Okay? <laughs> ah, to the disciples, as I've said, it must have been a public relations disaster. No? Goodbye, 10,000. Goodbye. <laughs> Again, in the crowds and the disciples, also the disciples, didn't understand that the language Jesus used was largely metaphorical. Okay? Kasabot man taana, karon nga mga panahon, we actually get it, no? Because we say, we devour, uh, we devour books, we ruminate on ideas, we eat our own words, no? Dagang kahit ang mga eating me metaphors, okay? O sayang mga grandparents doting on their grandson, oh, I just can eat him, no? We get it, but they didn't, no? And so, in fact, one of the writers <laughs> Augustine of Hippo actually said of John 6, 28, Why do you make ready your tooth and your belly? Only believe and you have eaten already. No? See, it was metaphorical. But I think Jesus deliberately did it because he wanted to sift who are the genuine followers and who are not. Okay? And so that makes room, that gives way to the last uh, verses which is the sifting. And so it was really a confusing discourse, no? That left the Jews stunned and staggered. From verses 62 to 71, it actually resulted, as I've said already, in a tremendous sifting of the disciples. Many of those who have followed him to this point took umbrage at his sermon and decided it was time to go home. I'm out of here. No more response sa daghan ng mga crowds. Because in verse 66, it says, There, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. They were very disgusted by what Jesus said. Okay, other translations actually said uh, that they went the way of the crowds. No, ang mga disciples niya, kinina mga suod sa iya, ang uban ng mga disciples. Because he had a lot, more than the twelve. Okay? They went the way of the crowds. They no longer want to be associated with him. Other translations said they abandoned him decisively. Okay? Wala na. That was it for many of them. Okay? So rejected, Jesus was rejected by the religious people in Judea in chapter 5. And now again, he gets rejected by the masses. But Jesus' rejection really is not yet complete. At this point, there is another group of people that will reject him no? in the next chapter. So in, the, in verse 67, he turns to his remaining disciples and said, Do you want to go too? 
Kamu, gusto mo? No? Gusto mo mo? Awapod? It was painful, but it was necessary. And now, Jesus had to sort out, as I've said, who are loyal and who are not. And do you know that in the age to come, there will be a greater sifting that will happen among God's people? Amen? The sheep from the goats, the wheat from the weeds, those who serve and those who do not. Basi mo, basi magtuot nga okay na ta. No? Okay na ta. Pagkamatay na to, diretsyo ta. There is still a greater sifting in the age to come. So we need to be prepared for that eventuality. Okay? And this is your only time. No? While you are still living, this is the only way you can show your, your loyalty and your faithfulness. There will be no other time that will be given us. Okay? That's a, think about those things. No? See what has happened here. Now, I don't know about you, but to be rejected is a very painful situation. Okay, that, has must, that must have been a really difficult time for Jesus emotionally. Okay, again, as I said, the uh, theme of acceptance rejection is prevalent in the Gospel of John. Okay, so in response to that question to the disciples, do you want to go to? Now, Peter, as often the case, answered for the disciples and he says, Okay, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, okay, that's a really, really great statement to end with. But it wasn't as if the remaining disciples didn't think about living. Leaving, okay? They have. No, ang nabilin, the 12, they actually thought about leaving too. Mo na ningon si... Peter, they are, Lord, to whom shall we go? Meaning, gihuna-huna naman ako tanan na pwede mo mo ato. Wala naman. <laughs> okay? But after thinking it through, they arrive at a fixed and settled decision. Because in verse 69, uh, Peter says, we believe and know that you are truly, you are the Holy One of God. It is better translated as we believe and have known. Amen? And Peter is affirming here that they have now reached a final conviction that Jesus is indeed the Holy One of God. They were all in. No? They have burned their bridges. Now, after this public disaster, relations disaster, they have burned their bridges, so to speak. Okay? And this, sometimes you would get to this point and you know, okay, this is really true this is the point of true discipleship. Do I follow even if it's hard? Amen? As I've said, use the power of your choice. Amen? Choose God. Choose life. Choose Jesus. Amen? So, ko. Challenge. What is Jesus doing in your life right now? Are you exper experiencing miracles or signs that are pointing you towards a greater revelation of who he is? Is Jesus your true bread? Are you satisfied in him? Okay? Or are you still restless at this point of your journey? Are you satisfied or are you restless? Okay? Have you experienced being rejected by people who know you and are close to you? Are you at the point of giving up on your faith? Are you at the point of giving up on Jesus' teachings? Are you at the point of giving up on Jesus? And lastly, the question to ask is, are you loyal? Are you loyal to the Son of God? Amen?